Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my main progression series where I'm trying to max my account. Oh god, I don't know guys, sometime hopefully. <laughs> maybe, maybe 2021. Anyway, the whole idea is we are spending pretty much as much money as necessary to train it up using some of the quicker methods in the game. We're trying to experiment with interesting trading methods, keeping it fresh. Anyway, let's get into it. Well, here we are guys, back at the Basilisks once again. I enjoy them, we've been grinding them for a while, we're up to around 1500 kills or something. No job, but something that is really exciting is 94 Slayer. Now we've been working on that level for a long time now, and now we have one more big grind ahead of us to 95 Slayer. At that point, it's all kind of gravy after that. We will have unlocked the Alchemical Hydra, which means we've unlocked everything. After that, we're just going to do boss tasks and just get as much money as possible from Slayer, instead of going for more experienced tasks like we're doing right now. Well, I guess we may as well try to make at least a dent in 95. Man, I think I have an addiction to Bible skills. The experience is just so quick. Uh, I just keep falling back to them. Now granted today, I don't think I'm gonna try to get to 99. Herb lore, maybe just 90. At level 90, you can make the highest level potion, I believe, in the Chambers of Zarek. After that, there isn't really benefit to getting higher herb lore. There is level 84 herb lore. We can now make anti-fire potions. Right now, we're kind of balancing how cost-effective the potion is with the experience rate. We're not going for anything under like 300k per hour, so it's still pretty quick. There is 85 Herb Lore. We can now make the Zamorak mix. <laughs> like we do that. And there we go, there's 86 Herb Lore. We can now make the Stamina mix and Divine Bastion. Okay. Now that's all I'm going to be doing for now because we have a really interesting uh, set of offers that finally just completed on my flipping account. I have a really interesting training method, I guess you would call it, more so Moneymaker that finally has all sorted itself out and we're ready to go with it. Now something I have been kind of working on now for nearly a week is buying out a bunch of broken Barrows items. Uh, shout out to Becht who originally did this. I mean, I've been thinking of doing this method for a while, but he did make a video pretty similar to this. Now essentially the way it works is you buy a broken version of any Barrows piece, you can repair it in your POH, and then often then turn a profit. Now that's not going to be the case on every item here, as I was buying them over the course of nearly a week, some things just naturally declined in price, some things went up, so I'm kind of curious to know how much money and smithing experience we're going to get from doing this. Because yeah, every time you repair it, you actually do get smithing experience as well, I think. Okay, I'm going to pull out all these offers and we can have a look at our bank here. Now we bought about 7 or 8 different Barrows pieces, now let's go withdraw them all. Now we ended up investing nearly 500 mil into these items, 463 mil is the GE average price right now. Uh, so let's go trade these over to my main account and start repairing them. Now to do this method effectively, you definitely are gonna need an armor stand and ideally a higher level smithing because in the end it makes a big difference. The base cost to repair with an NPC is 60,000 for a helmet, 90,000 for a body, 80,000 for legs and 100,000 for the weapon. At level 89 smithing, that is essentially cut in half, not quite, but pretty close, which in most cases is going to make the difference between profiting off the item and losing money. So it's pretty important. Now on top of the broken items, you're also going to need a lot of cash on hand, because even though the cost is cut in half, it's still pretty expensive. Uh, so I'm just going to start from the left to the right, start repairing, after I will determine what I can sell them for and how much money we made on each individual item. Because right now, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> but it is far too late to turn back now, so we're pretty committed. So essentially, just go ahead and withdraw your item, teleport to your POH, run down to your armor stand and repair everything in one go. 650 smithing experience for that, that's pretty good, but we're gonna need some more money, I think. Okay, so we ended up repairing all of them. It took only around 20 minutes. Uh, now, this didn't turn out to be the epic training method I thought it was in my head. You don't realistically get much experience for repairing these things, but in the end, I guess the main point was money. So we're going to trade them all back over to my flipping account. We're going to get these in here to sell quickly as I'm a little worried about their prices declining. So we want to get these up for sale now. Once they're up for sale, we'll calculate how much money we're going to make. Hopefully we make money. 
Well, we have everything up for sale, and I'm just gonna have to hope at this point. I'm a little nervous. Uh, there are just a ton of Barrows bots right now or something because Barrows items are crashing a lot. Luckily, we do have a pretty big buffer to go through first before we start losing money, but you know, it definitely could happen. Okay, everything is sold off, and it's a bit of a mixed bag, so let's go over it. Now, first appeared the Guthans Helm. We actually made close to a mil on that, uh, 952k, so that's good. Kirill's leather top, not so good. We lost a mil on that one. The Arim's robe top, we also lost a lot of money, 3.4 mil on that. Uh, the Varox plate skirt, though we made 3 mil on, my god. The Guthans War Spear, we ended up making 4 mil on, so even better. And we have a couple items just waiting to sell off here, but the Guthans plate body, we're looking to make about 5.7 mil on. And by far our best investment was actually into the Arim staff, who knew? And we made 7.3 mil in profit just on that one item, so pretty good overall. Now following that up, we also ended up making 2.1 mil on the Duroc plate legs and around 400k on the Duroc's axe. Now in total, our net profit, counting all of our losses, all of our profits, uh, was 19.3 mil, uh, which is good considering it only took me around an hour more or less to put in these offers, repair all the Barrow's equipment, put them up for sale. Obviously 20 mil in an hour is very good, although right now it seems like the risk is very high, Barrow's items are just dropping constantly, and no matter how good a method is, you definitely don't want to be stuck with a depreciating asset. Now with our 20 mil cash investment, we're going to go ahead and put that into Herblore. Now it's definitely not going to be enough to get us to 99, and honestly I don't want to do that now anyway, but it should be enough to get us to 90, which is really the last important level. At 90, we can make the Overload Potion in the Chambers of Zarek, and after that, there's just no other benefit to getting higher level Herblore. Okay, that is going to be level 88 Herblore in the bushes again, just my favorite place to go. We're currently making Ranging Potions, not the most cost effective, but very quick. We can get almost up to 400k per hour here. GP to XP wise, I think it's around 8 or 9 though, so it's not terribly cheap. Hey, I just noticed something guys, we just crested 200 million total experience. I must have done that in the last hour. That's really exciting. On top of that, we just got 89 herb lore, which means we only have one more level to go until 90. Wow, 200 mil. I think I was at under 100 mil at the beginning of the year. Okay, there we go. That is going to be level 90 herb lore. Uh, all we're going to do for now, we can now mix Noxifer potions into overloads and raids. Now we can get off our lazy ass and actually do the herb lore part of chambers. Oh Cerberus, why do you do this to me? This is literally the kill or maybe the second kill after finishing my Tebow from scratch video. I was killing Cerberus for like three hours trying to get a drop for the video. No luck. Of course, as soon as that's over, I come here immediately get a drop. Oh well, whatever. Smoldering Stone, that's two mil. That's still good. And I don't know if you know this, but we actually crested a thousand kills at Cerberus. So we're getting up there. There is another task complete, 240 done in a row bringing us up to 575 Slayer points. Now this Slayer task is pretty big for me because we just got 97 defense, which is a massive level for me. That means we only have two more defense levels until we are max combat. Defense is our last combat stat, and once we get two more levels, we'll finally be 126 combat for the first time ever. Well, it appears my quest cape is gone, as we're gonna go ahead and get that back today. Uh, we have two quests to do, getting ahead and a poor sign of interest. They should be pretty easy, but we do need them uh, to wear the quest cape, which while isn't particularly useful, I don't know, I kind of want it back. Oh man, this chicken place brings me back. Okay, so that should be it. We killed the Headless Beast, uh, which means we should be done with getting ahead. Oh. Okay, now we're done. There we go, we finished the getting ahead quest, which uh, got 4,000 crafting experience, 3,200 construction, Actually wouldn't be so bad if I was a lower level account. Okay, so next up here we have the poor sign of interest quest. And I think we started on this notice board here, which I actually really like that is a quest starting mechanic. Okay, so we went ahead and murdered the Sour Hog, uh, which means we finished a poor sign of interest, which means we also have our quest cape back. Uh, there are some rewards for it, but look at that main reward. Oh my god, look at those goggles. This quest was worth it just for those bad boys. Holy crap. Okay, so every once in a while I come here and do a bit of fishing. Every level is taking forever at this point, but there is 83 fishing. Uh, actually, just passively getting fishing levels up has been really important for one thing in particular, and that is diary completions, because there are a lot of diaries that require highest level fishing, and we now have the requirement for quite a few of them. Now, this is going to be my last uh, main account upload of 2020, 
And rounding everything off, we have 90 smithing, which is awesome. We're nearly halfway to 99 smithing, probably at this rate, just gonna do gold ore to 99, but maybe we'll find something fun to do as well. Wow, at 90 is a huge level. You can now make rune scimitars, dragon fire shields, uh, and a few other things. Kind of weird that you can make a rune scimitar and a dragon fire shield at the same level, but what do I know? And there we go. That is actually going to be my last level of the year, I think. 79 agility. Now, when it comes to maxing, this has probably been my most productive year ever. I want to take a minute to look back at where we started back in January and see how far we've come. Now, back when I rebooted my main account progression series, our total level was 1738, and we only had around 60 million experience. You can look at the levels there, I mean, they're not great, they're pretty much just a mid-level account. At that point, we only had one level 99. So in 2020, we managed to get 99 attack, 99 ranged, 99 prayer, 99 magic, 99 hit points, 99 crafting, 99 fletching, 99 cooking, and 99 farming. We also made a ton of progress on pretty much all of the other skills except for, well, mining and woodcutting apparently. Now we're ending the year at 2072 total level, but not only that, we also earned a quest cape this year. So this year we definitely made a ton of progress. Now this account progression was done fairly casually, I would say. On average, we're probably playing two hours a day, maybe less even, I don't know. As it goes to show that you can definitely make a solid amount of progress over time as long as you stick with it, as long as you train semi-efficiently, or in my case, just have a bunch of money to blow on skilling supplies. So I'm really looking forward to 2021, and I think there is a possibility I could max next year. I mean, it is definitely hard to say for sure, because some of the slower skills I still have a lot of work to do, mainly like runecrafting, mining, agility, but really all we can do is try. Now before I go here guys, I want to give a massive thank you to one of my newest members over on YouTube named Cappy, who just subscribed at the Dragon tier of YouTube membership. Thank you so much, man. I really, really appreciate it. They're joining Zyl, James Luft, Brad Sings, Ocelot, and Kush Patel all at the Dragon Tier. We got quite a crew here now. Also, a big thank you to Birdbot and Base Titch for being subscribed at the Runite Tier. As always, if you're looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You will be immortalized in my videos, get access to my video release schedule, and of course, get a custom role in my Discord channel. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.